Namo Amida Buddha. The four profound thoughts which turn the mind towards Amida Dharma by Reverend Joshua Adrian Cilia. Karma, the law of cause and effect. Three, the conditioning effect. Due to our former engagement in the ten transgressions, we appear in bad environments and places. For example, if we killed, we are born in places with mortal dangers. If we took what was not given, we are born in places affected by famine, where crops are destroyed by nature elements. If we engage in sexual misconduct, we are born in muddy, repulsive or squalid places. Lying causes rebirth in places where we experience mental panic and material insecurity. If we spoke ill of others and sowed so discord, we will be born in places that are difficult to cross due to wild landscape. If we used harsh speech, we are born in desolate places, lacking vegetation and exposed to the elements. If we engaged in idle talk, we are born in infertile land with untimely and unpredictable seasons. If we were greedy, we are born in inhospitable lands with poor harvests and various adverse circumstances related to such places. If we were angry and wished harm on others, we are born in lands where we experience constant fear and many adverse conditions. If we supported wrong views, we are born in bad places where we have no refuge and protectors. 4. The proliferating effect. This refers to the fact that whichever one of the ten transgressions or evil acts we did before, we have the tendency to repeat it again and again. Thus our evil deeds and the evil causes we plant tend to multiply and diversify, making us drown even more in samsara. B. Karma and the salvation offered by Amida Buddha. The reason I insisted on the above explanations and passages in the selection A, general teaching on karma, is to help us realize the gravity of our daily thoughts, actions and deeds. If an on honest person contemplates the above, he would naturally feel overwhelmed by the realization of his tendency to do evil. Indeed, how many times did we wish the death of somebody or even kill various beings? Killing non-human beings like insects or animals is also an act that generates evil karma. Or look with envy at what someone else has. How many times have we got angry, used harsh language, practiced sexual misconduct, lied or acted dominated by greed, etc.? Perhaps some of us even spread wrong views that run contrary to the Dharma. We must ask ourselves those questions, and after realizing our incapacity to lead a life of constant virtuous actions, we should immediately take refuge in Amida Buddha say his name and faith, and wish to be born in his pure land after death. We must take refuge in Amida Buddha, for the attitude of someone who is about to die now, in this very moment, without having any more time left, nor the power to purify one's actions. Indeed, there is no time for the so-called spiritual evolution, and the consequences of our evil karma will manifest without fail. If we already have done some of the above ten, ten transgressions, and who hasn't done any of them in this life, or former lives, and continues to do them. It will be impossible for us ordinary people to purify them by our own power, while we are still living our busy lives in this samsaric environment. We really have no guarantee that we can reach a moment in this life which may end any time when we'll have no attachments, blind passions, and delusions. The clock of impermanence is ticking, and the mind deposit of heavy karma is already filled to the brim. Apparently, by saying that sentient beings cannot free themselves from birth and death by their own power, it seems that Jodo Shinshu misinterprets or does not totally accept the doctrine of karma. However, Jodo Shinshu fully accepts the teaching of karma, just that it sheds light on a very important aspect that you, many usually tend to forget. Yes, generally speaking, we can change our karma and thus decide to act in such and such a way, influencing our own destiny. But do we really always act as we wish? Suppose a person who drinks a lot since childhood and has now 30 years or 40 years of alcoholism, can he give up alcohol just like that by a simple act of will? Or someone who smokes since early childhood, can he really give up smoking overnight? We see from experience that many smokers, alcoholics or drug abusers cannot give up their bad habits so easily, some of them even ending their lives without being able to stop their harmful behavior. How much more is the influence of the past habitual karma? This habitual karma is not what we did in a habitual manner in a single lifetime, but what we did and were concentrated on in many lifetimes. If it is hard to put an end to the habitual karma of smoking, which lasts only 20 or 30 years, 
How much harder or even impossible would it be to stop the various bad karmic tendencies of many lifetimes? Also, as I explained it, the proliferating effect of karma, we have the automatic tendency to repeat again and again the evil acts we did before, thus drowning even more in samsara. So, Jodo Shinshu doesn't deny free will in changing karma, but insists on the truth that this will is so much weakened by the habitual karma of past lives that it becomes almost incapable of really changing something. When we have become accustomed to many eons and long kalpas with living in ignorance, hate, greed, jealousy, attachments, how could we not be influenced by this habitual evil karma, also in this life? And how could we end all these perpetual miseries just by force of will? We all know that a long time of drug abuse leads to dependency, a state in which the personal will of change is extremely limited and one needs immediate help from a specialist. But we have taken the drugs of delusion for many lifetimes since the beginningless past. Jodo Shinshu teaching and method doesn't start by staring at the ideal. We all have Buddha nature and we can become Buddhas, or at least do pure deeds and gain merits, but from the state of mind in which we dwell in the present moment. Thus entering the Jodo Shinshu path is like saying, Hello, I am a Joshua Adrian and I am an alcoholic. The Jodo Shinshu Buddhist doesn't say, Hello, I am Joshua and I have Buddha nature, but Hello, my J name is Joshua and I am ignorant and full of blind passions and capable of healing myself, that is attaining Nirvana or Buddhahood. So, first, in Jodo Shinshu we recognize our own incapacities and then we accept the medicine which is the primal vow of Amida Buddha. We understand that we are so sick that we can no longer rely on ourselves and we agree to apply the only treatment that works in dependency cases like ourselves. Someone who says, I can become a Buddha in this lifetime because my true nature is Buddhahood itself, is someone who fails to understand the influence of good and evil karma of past lives and that every evil act done, even as slight as a particle on the tip of a strand of rabbit's fur or sheep's wool, has its cause in past karma, as Shinran said in the 13th chapter of Tanisha. In the same way as someone who abused drugs for many years thinks that he can give up immediately his dependency and after a few trials he ends up taking a superdose. Also, a person may not wish to harm anyone and yet ends up killing a hundred or a thousand people. This is the heavy influence of karma from past lives and this is exactly why we need Amida's salvation. This salvation, as promised in his primal vow, doesn't depend on our own will, which is influenced by our own good or bad karma from past lives, but it depends solely on Amida's power of curing our illnesses and transforming us into Buddhas. It is by the inconceivable working of the vow that we are saved. By contemplating on the teaching of karma and realizing our incapacity to always have pure thoughts, actions and words, we decide to turn our minds towards Amida Dharma and take advantage of the salvation Amida Buddha is offering to us, ordinary beings, who cannot escape birth and death by ourselves. If we do that, the roots of our karma are cut, and although we continue to experience the results of past karma, and to act as beings filled with illusions and blind passions until the moment of our death, our karma cannot plant further seeds into another life. To explain how Amida's salvation works in the field of cause and effect, we must also understand the teaching on the transference of merit. Usually, in the practices based on personal power, the practitioner earns virtues or merits which he transfers for his own enlightenment. But in the case of other power, pure land way, the transference of merits takes place from Amida Buddha to those who entrust him, his primal vow. This transference of merit, Eko, carries the follower to the pure land where he attains nirvana or perfect enlightenment. Shinran Shonen said in a hymn, quote, when sentient beings of this evil world of the five defilements entrust themselves to the selected primal vow, virtues indescribable, inexplicable, and inconceivable fill these practitioners. End quote. Shinran explained the merit transference from Amida to the practitioner as having two aspects. Firstly, the merit transference of going forth, also echo, and secondly, the merit transference of returning to this world, genso echo. Quote, when I humbly contemplate the true essence of the Pure Land Way, I realize that Amida's merit transference has two aspects. One is the aspect of going forth and the other that of returning. End quote. 
The first refers to the fact that through Amida's transference of merit, we go to his pure land where we become Buddhas, while the second one means that after we become Buddhas in the pure land by sharing the same enlightenment as Amida, we return to the various samsaric realms and universes to save all beings. Quote, through the benefit of the directing of virtue for going forth, we enter the directing of virtue for returning to this world. Through great love, which is Amida's directing of virtue for our going forth, we attain great compassion, which is Amida's directing of virtue for our return. If not for the Buddha's directing of virtue, how could we realize enlightenment in the pure land? End quote. Quote, also merit transference means that after we have been born in that land, we awaken great compassion with which we turn towards and enter the cycle of birth and death to teach and guide sentient beings. This is also called merit transference. End quote. How do we receive the infinite and all-powerful merits of Amida Buddha? By entrusting ourselves to him, saying his name in faith, and Butsu, and wishing to be born in his pure land. These three items, faith, the Nembutsu of faith, the true Nembutsu is the, true, is the expression of true faith, and the wish to be born in the pure land are what Amida Buddha asked us to do in his primal vow. Simply stated, he said that if we want to escape the endless cycle of samsara, we should have faith in him, say his name, and aspire to be born in his pure land. Quote, If, when I attain Buddhahood, the sentient beings of the ten quarters with sincere mind, entrusting themselves aspiring to be born in my land, and saying my name, perhaps even ten times, should not be born there, may I not attain the supreme enlightenment. End quote. Faith, nembutsu, and wish, aspiration, to be born are all three aspects of faith, because if we truly have faith in Amida, then we automatically say his name, and wish to be born in his enlightened realm. To better understand the merit transference from Amida Buddha to us, we can compare it with a blood transfusion or an organ transplant. When a sick person receives healthy blood or a vital organ, he can continue to live even if until then he was supposed to die. Thus the blood or the organ he receives becomes part of his own body and will function as if it has always been there. In the same way, we who deserve to be born in the lower realms, if we are left at the mercy of our unenlightened karma, by entrusting ourselves to Amida Buddha, we receive his enlightened karmic merits which imbues our mind streams and leads us securely to his pure land. Even if we continue to have delusions and blind passions until we die and we are actually born in the pure land, we become united with Amida Buddha from this very life, we enter the stage of non-retrogression as his own blood or enlightened karma circulates now through our veins. It is impossible for us ordinary people to enter the stage from which we do not retrogress from spiritual achievements but if we rely on Amida Buddha, we are assured of escaping samsara at the end of our physical bodies. Just imagine you want to reach by foot a certain place situated at a distance of thousands of kilometers away. You may think that if you're serious enough and you're persistent, you can reach the destination. But are you sure that you are incapable of enduring the hardships of the road, the wild beasts, the winds, icy storms and tornadoes that will come in your way? What if you get sick and die before finishing the journey? If you rely on yourself, there will be no point in your journey when you could say for certain that you are assured of safely reaching the destination. Now imagine that someone comes to you and offers himself to take you there on his plane. If you accept, you just enter the plane and you will be taken to the destination safely and in short time. The pilot is a meter Buddha and the plane or vehicle is his primal vow. Accepting to enter the plane is faith, Shinjin, and the Nimbutsu of faith. Being on such a safe plane with such a good pilot means that you're assured of reaching the destination or in Dharma words, you're assured of birth in the pure land and of subsequent attainment of Buddhahood there. Namo Amida Buu.